Soul Searchers, welcome back to the Muses Merkaba with me, your host, Elle Angeline. And today's episode is all about believing in yourself, acting as if, and living with an abundance mindset, reframing our beliefs and creating our own reality. Today, I'm talking with Baron Wade, who I brought onto the show last September to discuss his album, Born Future, dropping this February the 22nd. Baron is one of my favorite people. I don't actually think I've ever met someone so happy all the time, with so much passion and instant manifesting skills. Baron is just a small time boy from a small town in Indiana. He survived a tornado that devastated the rest of his hometown and has weathered many storms. He is passionate about his Naples, Florida tourism business and is now tuning in to his intuition, which is leading him down the path to his music career. In this episode, we chat about reframing your beliefs, creating your life plan, even if it means going against what everyone else is doing, and manifesting the best version of you, the you that manifests with confidence and ease. Yo, what's up, guys? Hey, Barry. Hello, Good everyone. To have you back. What's going on? Good to have you back on the show again. It's been a long time. The last time we spoke on the podcast was the 17th of September. Right. And this is so cool because we're doing virtually and you're in Mexico and I'm in Florida right now. So what have you been up to since since the last podcast? Back in Florida now. So I, uh, I have a business here to our now USA. Um, you know, I've been riding a lot of segues every day. It's been my office. I'm staying busy every day. My office is uh, palm trees and tropical paradise. Thank you for That's having good. me, by the way. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I feel honored to be on again. Oh, it's a pleasure having you. It's been um, a good couple of months. I've been quite busy doing the podcast, actually. I think when I invited you on, that was probably my third podcast, which started on a whim. And wow. this is now number 18. So I'm loving it. And Let's go. I've got a few, few good interviews lined up. So it's going to be a good year, 2022. So. so let's talk more about your album, Born Future. How's that coming along? It's very good. You know, I've, uh, so as you know, I was in Mexico for three months traveling and uh, hmm. it was Where'd you very, go? very, I was all over. Uh, we went to uh, Isla Mujeres. I went to Cancun and Playa de Carmen and uh, Tulum was amazing. Um, that is definitely my favorite, Tulum. Um, yeah. You know, I have a lot of favorites, but uh, Tulum, I would think, is uh, more of my favorite. It's more of like a Miami. What do you, what do you mean you have a lot of favorites? Are you a bit polyamorous? <laughs> I, I'm not hey, even Baron? sure what that means. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what that means, but Tulum was like a jungle version of Miami and oh, a little bit totally more pricier. With it was Miami a little prices. bit more pricier, a little yeah. bit more than Miami. I found those a little bit more expensive than Miami. And did you check out any cenotes, any cenote parties, anything like that? Went to a private cenote party. Um, Amazing. Really cool. So So do you think that would be sort of inspiration on the sort of venues you'd like to play at going forward? Yeah. So um, this summer, we're going to be playing at a lot of uh, venues. Uh, specifically you keep in Tulum. We, when you say we're going to be playing, who you and my music? Like I like to think my music's <laughs> a part of me or with me, you know. So the, it's the not, music it's travels like with me. Your soul, I like that. And we got a good team behind me. I got my manager. Good. Amazing. And, uh, the other people that back me up. Um, How on earth do they put up with you? <laughs> You know, I, it's uh, like, say, for instance, this podcast, I'm about 30 minutes late. Um, you know, I'm always an late. Hour, an everything. hour and 30. An hour and 30, actually. Yeah, no one's I'm counting. sorry. Uh, I'm very excited. Uh, I've put a lot of time uh, into this album and a lot of uh, work into the music. And I'm very excited to show you guys. Yes, I produce all the music myself. I've studied music. Did you always want to be a music like producer or DJ? It's funny because I had no interest 
and making music or uh, like anything in the music genre. My older brother, he actually went to school for music um, to do exactly, literally to do exactly what I'm doing. Really? And I've always been the uh, the sports guy Who's that playing Chad? hockey. Yeah, Chad, my older brother, Chad. And you know what's funny? When I was 16 years old, I got a tattoo of a music note on my back, and I had no interest in music. In uh, third grade, I literally failed music class because I knew nothing about music. I had no interest in music. You know what changed? I was uh, performing at Virginia's, Augusto. I love you, man, if you're listening. I was actually what's, performing what's at Virginia's. Virginia's. Virginia's is in Naples, Florida. Uh, it's on Fifth Avenue. If you guys ever come to Naples, it's a very, 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 very nice restaurant. Very high end. So Augusto didn't um, have like a performer that night. They have a lot of dinner shows and they have live singers at night. So he was like, I don't have anyone to California. They call me the California kid. He's like, California kid, you want to go up there and perform or you want to play some music? I'm like, dude, you know what? I'm all in. Let's go. So I went up there and I played music for everyone. And all of a sudden, the room literally fills up. And I'm like, oh my God, there's, I've never been in front of so many people. There had to have been like 500 people in there. It's playing a lot of Kygo. So I went up there, played the music. Um, it ended up being really, really successful that whole night. The next day on Saturday was actually a sold out show and we had a line out the door. True story. And we filled up the whole room. There was about 900 people in there. Amazing. In this little restaurant. Um, their numbers had quadrupled. Eric and Augusto. I love you guys. Thank you for literally making everything happen that day. Um, and believing in you. They they were literally mind boggled. Um, Amazing. The next weekend, we had the owners of the clubs come up and watch me. Came on and it was go time from there. And it was so fun. It was a very, very good night. So do you reckon that's what launched your sort of passion for, for DJing? On Saturday night, I'm getting up there. This is my fourth performance. And um, like people are like, coming up to me, calling me Kygo. I was like, you know what? Maybe I should try and start learning how to make this music. But the numbers that the, the people, uh, such it attracted such good people, the atmosphere. You are the god of your universe and you create your reality in every moment. We all live in our own reality, somehow combined, like an Xbox game, but we have our own control. The rest of the world reflects the feelings, thoughts, desires, and beliefs we have of ourselves and the rest of the world. Although we are all playing this game simultaneously, there is only one player, one controller. You are the only player. Therefore, you are the god of your own reality. You create everything you want, everything you don't, the people and the circumstances. They are all created in every moment by your feelings and reactions. Be aware of how you react to something, because the law of attraction sends it straight back to you. Every thought you think is your order to the universe, so be mindful of the words that you use and what requests you are asking the universe for. Thoughts become things. Every time you intend something will happen and you don't doubt yourself, these things will show up in your world. You will be met with more instances to feel the way you do right now. You have to care about your feelings, what you're putting out there, and how it makes you think. Don't ever forget where your power comes from. It comes from within you. There's no judgment, no expectation, no right, no wrong. There's just learning and experience. I have a, a, a tourism business here in Naples. Um, so I've been uh, focusing on how the business you, and music. Yeah, how do you find the time to juggle your new music career and your existing business that you own every single day i've been working coming home and studying music and working yeah. on the album so every little bit adds up i guess uh, i'm very excited to show you guys what i've made it's uh, been a very long road uh it's had its ups and downs and uh the project that i'm putting out there is uh it's very powerful to me and i hope it is to you as well
And then also, um, I have very big plans for the future of music. Um, I've been, uh, you know, I've been putting a lot of homework into the music industry. Uh, I just got a, got a call today that I'll be on the radio in California, play my music out there. We're going to put it out there. It's all, uh, it's all being made and created. So compared to producing your own music, what is it about DJing that makes it interesting for you? What do you love about DJing? What I love about DJing is because it's mm. like uh, all this time that I put into a song, like putting all this time, all this sweat, and uh, sometimes even tears, frustration, ups and downs, days, weeks, into one song. And to play this in front of how many ever people you have, you'll see who likes it, who doesn't. It's it's an art. So is it the challenge what... that you thrive on or the reward of seeing the people on the dance floor dancing to like your sound so it's like baseball the the challenge is the practice the challenge is running up and down running four or five miles before game day you know and the game day is the actual performance and uh that's what i thrive on is the performance that's what means the most to me is the performance it uh, kind of gives you the work it shows it proves the work that i've done performing for the crowds yeah Absolutely. Do you play any musical instruments? Yeah, I play the keyboard. Do you play any sports? I do play hockey still. Uh, I can still play lacrosse. If you need me to coach you, I got a lot of advice. Uh, but I do play hockey down here in Florida um, yeah. just to get my mind off things. I don't play uh, serious. I played for a team in Canada before I came back over here to Florida. And I, I grew up playing hockey. So it's, 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 a, it's a language to me. Hockey is like uh, video games to you gamers out there. I love video games. Forza, Forza, I love cars. I'm a huge car guy. Pete, I know you're listening out there, man. Uh, we're going to get the McLaren tomorrow. Pete is, uh, so he's from New York. He's a, uh, he's, he has an exotic car company. Pete's got a lot of cars. He just had Selena Gomez had his Escalade in, uh, up in New York. Pete's from, uh, Pete's from Long Island. I'm very excited. I've uh, I've put a lot of time into this. I've been releasing a song on Valentine's Day. It's going to be called Missing You. Nice. Who it's going to be my there? first single. You know, I, I really miss my family, a pathway of life that I've chosen. I don't get to see them that much. So, If there is a version of you that you wish to become, the version of you that, say, is in a loving relationship, the version of you that is a successful entrepreneur, the version of you that is fit, healthy, the version of you that makes a ton of money, the version of you that is a traveling DJ, what you have to do to be that version is to declare that you are and then be it in every moment. This is called acting as if. Especially when it's hard to push through those challenging moments, those bad days, that's when the change is made. When you move through the resistance, that's when the change is made. And if you're worried that you might feel like you're lying to yourself when acting as if, then so what? Because you are already lying to yourself when you are telling yourself that you're not good enough. Just be the version that has exactly what you want and behave like that person. Where do you see yourself settling? Or do you just um, want to travel? You know, honestly, yeah, I want to travel, but I do want to have a house. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an island off uh, off the Caribbean, actually. You know, so you're a bit of an island boy. To. I'm an island boy. Yeah, <laughs> but I do uh, I do want to be mainland uh, here in Naples. Um, I love where I where I was raised in Indiana. Um, that's where my heart is, and my heart will never leave there. So the states, and uh, also Tulum. Yeah, other than that, you know, life's good. I'm chilling. I'm I'm living it up. Uh, very happy. You know, I got I got very good, very good intentions for what's come. Uh, I'm very excited for you guys to um, listen in and hear what I've done. Do you believe in life after death, Baron? You know, I do think about death. That is like probably the number one unanswered scientific question of all time. No? One day I'll find out, put it that way. So you believe in God, you said. So are you very religious? What religion are you? I was baptized a Christian. Uh, I love church. I'm a church guy. I, uh, you know. It's... Would you say you're a night owl or an early bird? Recently an early bird. I'm getting up 5 through 9 a.m. What time's your first tour? Every day. Tomorrow, 11 a.m. So I get myself okay. like eight hours. 
Yeah. Tell, tell me what your morning routine is like. My what morning routine. So mm-hmm. when I wake up in the morning, go outside and I look at the, uh, or I see the weather and I go outside and I, I feel the temperature. It's It's been pretty chilly lately, about 60, 70 degrees um, every day. Kind of see what the news is for the day. I check the news. Yeah, just like, so like the news as in like stocks. So you can tell if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. You will see literally, and it affects people's mood. If it's doing good, if it's doing bad, I put on music, I get in the shower, I take shower, brush my teeth, uh, drink the Celsius all in the meantime. I don't, I don't eat breakfast. And I, uh, and then after that, I, I work into music. I, I check my emails. I, I see what's going on for my day. I plan my day out from there on out. And from about nine, 10 30 in the morning, I'm, I have a very clear vision of how my day is going. And then until about 12.31, uh, depending on like what I'm feeling, I will go and eat sushi, fish. I eat a lot of sushi. I eat a lot of seafood. Um, What's your favorite uh, meal of all time? Lo- I like, love What would pasta. be your meal on death row? Death row? Um, steak and lobster, baby. All day steak and lobster i love a good steak and i love a fresh lobster yeah and uh sea bass i love sea bass i love uh greens you know spinach asparagus mashed potatoes i love i love a you know i'm from the country so i love a a country home-cooked meal what's Um, a typical like indiana dish you're looking at like corn and like mashed potatoes and and some meat and and macaroni and cheese and how were your um, friends and family affected by the recent tornado that like ripped through Indiana? In, like, was it December that or November? Was, uh, that was like. Yeah, that was in. Um, wasn't uh, really December. tornado season, was it? Uh, yeah, it's always tornado season in the Midwest, but that was actually in oh, really? Kentucky, and uh, right. it, it ripped through. Um, uh, I've, I've been through a tornado uh, when I was a kid. Uh, Landon was there, my cousin. Uh, I grew up with my my cousins the same age as me. We're about a month apart. Uh, Landon, how old are you? Baron, I'm 29, and he's 29 as well. We're we're born literally a month apart. So his last name is my first name. It's my mom's maiden name. So Baron is my mom's maiden name, which is my first name, Baron. Oh. And my middle name is Wade, and that's my music name. But Landon was staying with me that night. And uh, we were about 10, 11 years old, and it was a clear night. Uh, we walked around the neighborhood that night, and we go to bed. Next thing you know, Landon's mom, my aunt, Sherry, she's calling my mother, and she's like, there has been a tornado like five miles from her, which is about 12 miles from us and she warns my mom and next thing you know my mom is waking me and landing up we we slept in the same room and uh, my mom's like waking us up and next thing you know we're in the hallway i i grew up in a one bedroom house a very small house in a very small town and my mom's waking us up and uh, she's like you got to get to the hallway now and and it's so funny because the last tornado we have wasn't as serious. And my dad was eating a salad during the whole entire tornado. <laughs> and it has it that tornado ripped our tree up. That's the worst damage it did, thank God. But this tornado, salad? my dad, the salad, this tornado, the salad was not there. So we knew it was serious. My dad was there, my mom was there in the hallway. We get blankets, we grab everything within five minutes. This tornado literally lasted five seconds it was like and then it was done and then silence right after that then we all get up from the pillows we make sure everything's all good you know what happens we walk outside the front door so we walk out the front door and everything is flat complete destruction it was like almost it didn't feel like we were alive and all the houses from my house, the tornado, have jumped over my house and have jumped across the street. And from across the street and miles and miles on have been completely flatlined. 
This wow. has been one of this has been one of the biggest tornadoes in my hometown history. And it skipped your house. It literally it jumped had your house. Literally jumped my house into my neighbor's house and on. And you don't believe in life after death. I don't believe it. Even I think though, you've got a few people watching after you and the family. Um, when or was it's that? a matter of luck. That was in 2004. So if you Google 2004, 2004 uh, Indiana, Newburgh or Evansville, Indiana tornado, it comes up and you'll see the Crazy. pictures. It, it's wild. We, I'm like crying. I'm freaking out. My parents are freaking out on me because I'm like outside walking around. Not even 20, 30 minutes. We have the whole entire American military tanks military cars, military trucks going through our neighborhoods. My dad's digging out my neighbor through the, uh, through like the pile of wood. We're checking on our other neighbors. It was just like, it almost felt like a dream. People have died. A lot of people have died been- in that current moment. And it was like so surreal that you, that the bodies had not been found. So it was so surreal. Wow. Like the, the, the visions and the feelings and, Everything all that at once. That must have been quite traumatic. Cool. How old were you? I was about 10 or 11 years old. But um, we had a lot of support from the churches and all that, bringing us food. The, they, they donated lots of food. Everybody was taking care of us. Uh, I didn't have power for about two months. Everything was wrecked. Like everything. Wow. Pieces. So it took about, I don't know, six, seven months. And you know what? I was just talking about this today, about that tornado. I was talking about it on a tour earlier today. But uh, in the long run, I was jealous because my neighbor have got all my neighbors are all got brand new houses on the block. They all got brand new houses. And from there on, they everybody got brand new houses built. And it has brought in more value to the neighborhood. So my parents' house have actually increased in value of what it's worth because of my neighbor's house and what it looks like yeah. and the value of it. Yeah, it sounds like you guys are pretty protected. That was uh, amazing. That was a pretty, uh, pretty surreal experience. That's insane. Heartbreaker, or have you had your heart broken? Guys, there's true love out there, and I believe it's at all. Just believe in yourself and attract what you want. You know, um, everything happens for a reason. It, it's like a feeling of w- when you know it's right. So. But how do you um, know? It's just a feeling. It's like the the, the limitless feeling that 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 you have and that's when people get married and people have kids and start a family is because they believe in that higher power so yeah i'm single and uh you know i'm you know i'm living life uh i've taken a different path than my friends a lot of my friends most of my friends i must say i've taken a very different path they're uh not to put anyone in the spotlight but everyone's getting married everyone's uh you know Everyone has something going for themselves, you know, which is good. You know, that's what gets you through everyday life. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm chasing my dream and I feel like, uh, like if I were to get married, if I have kids, it would distract me from my dream and, and, uh, it would distract, uh, of, uh, of, of finding out what I truly want in life. So I'm waiting to, to find what I want in life. I'm choosing that more than of uh, the relationship of finding a partner in life. So uh, that that's what separates me from most of the people I know, about 99%. So the answer was heartbreaker then, girls. <laughs> What's the best compliment you've ever been given? No, I mean, like hair, eyes, teeth. And yeah, I'd say I look like Brad Pitt. I'm not sure. You know, I am myself. I am who I am. Um, I've made mistakes. I'm not perfect. You know, I'm a very loving guy. I'm a very happy guy. I'm always uplifting. I'm I'm always looking at the brighter things. Uh, I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm always, uh, yeah, what can we do to get there? Well, what's it going to take? What do we have to do? Um, y- you know, where are we going to be at five years from now? Where are we going to be at 10 years from now? What can we do? You know what I mean? Maybe it, is, maybe so, it isn't the internet. I think there's more to uh, laugh than social media. I think there's going to be a massive social media crash and people are going to start going inwards. And um, when consciousness expands, people are going to start spending more time with each other 
instead of online in this world of virtual reality bullshit and start making deeper connections. The love that you have, the love you share, the words you express, your family, your loved ones, that's what means the most. Are you happy? You know, that that's what uh and that's what means the most. And and, and you know, the social media and all that, they uh they kind of uh, they kind of distract you from. But the whole thing with social media is that it's not reality. People are hiding behind this pretense exactly. screen of what they want the world to think that they are. It's but they're so not, easy, really. It's so easy to buy followers on social media. Yeah, cringe. It, it, I cringe at the thought, and it's so it's, easy to see if people have bought followers. All you have to do is click on their followers and see the so list of easy. bots. Like, do you not think it's a bit desperate that people have to actually go and buy followers to make themselves look good? And what a low self-esteem and how sad their their life must be if they've got it. It's like buying friends, right? And I've worked in the super yacht industry and I call it rent a crowd because you get these billionaires that have got all the money in the world that charter a yacht for a week. And they literally, they've got agents that go to nightclubs and like buy girls and guys to come and come on charter with them to have a good time. And I look at this and I'm like, well, where are your friends? Where are your real fucking friends? And where are we at a charter once was a 50 year old man from the UK and he came on board for his 50th birthday in the Caribbean for a two week charter. And he rented 11 Russian girls between the ages of 16 and 34 for his 50th birthday. Uh, And they were on rotation. Oh my God. And they were on rotation in the master cabin with him. And, you know, it looked like he was having a good time. But was he? Was he actually? Like, he couldn't really have a conversation with half of them because they were thick, because they were so young and probably didn't speak English. And I just thought, well, where, you know, you've you clearly got billions. Where are your real friends? Where are your family? Like, how sad is that, that you can't, you've got all this wealth, but you can't enjoy it with the people that you actually love and people that actually love you? That love you for who you are, not just for your your wallet. Right. You know? So I've seen it before, you know, digressing from the social media and buying followers, people buy friends. And the social media following thing is exactly the same, where people have to buy friends, buy followers, buy supporters. Even like, with uh, reality for me, you know? I'm, I, I drive Lamborghinis and... I drive nice cars and I, uh, I have a business here and, uh, I feel like some for like the, the people that I talk to and that I have relationships with, they kind of feel like, uh, as the sense as, uh, that's just life, you know, people, and I love showing people a good time. I love, you know, giving new experiences to people and, and uh, I'm a very happy guy. I love people and I, I love uh, showing off things and I, I love, uh, you know, just being happy. And, uh, but sometimes people are uh, not themselves and it's the same way with the internet, you know, people are not themselves and they try and fake who they are. And, uh, that, that can be very scary for the internet. I've invested a lot of money in crypto and I've learned the hard way. Um, uh, you just gotta be careful, you know, it's, don't get, you know, it's best to do things yourself. I've learned personally the, the obstacles that I had to face for myself just to be able to play sports was a huge impact on my life. I think a lot of people would misunderstand the Baron with a handle yeah. like Billionaire Baron after Absolutely. that story. You guys, I've, I've grown up with, um, uh, I'm the youngest in the family. I, I've grown up in a small town in Indiana. It's called Newburgh. I went to a very good high school called Castle High School. Uh, I had a lot of friends in high school. Uh, I was always happy. I've been in. You still, uh, why did you leave? Why did you leave Indiana? I left Indiana at the age of eighteen, or maybe it was nineteen. But I went to a uh, well. I started in a community school and for college, a college community school called Ivy Tech. Uh, this was at the age, I think it was 18. And then after that, I was like, you know what? I was like, uh, I want to get out of my parents and I want to go to a different college and I wanted to fit in. So I went to college in uh, Western Kentucky University, which is a very big university uh, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, 
they have a very big football stadium, all that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I played college lacrosse for a uh, club team there. That was fun. And uh, so I went to school there. And then um, long story short, guys, I moved to uh, Nashville, Tennessee, or a little bit out of Nashville. Uh, I moved in with my uncle and uh, I worked in a factory for eight months, 13 hours every day for eight months at the age of 19, 20, I was about 20 years old, about to turn 21. Uh, the eighth month in, I have uh, saved up as much money as I can. I moved to Los Angeles, California. I sold my car. So my parents had bought me my first car, which was a 2004 Ford Explorer. And I loved that car. I drove it throughout high school. That was like my car. And I sold it the day I moved to Los Angeles or the night before I moved to Los Angeles. And that next day I bought a one way to Los Angeles. I moved what did to you LA. Do in LA. In LA, I uh, was basically hanging out. I did MLM. So multi-level marketing in your network. I've learned is your net worth. So LA, I was there LA for, for a little bit. I was there for about two years. And then after LA, my grandmother at the time, I lived in Hollandale. I go there to stay there and I meet my friend and he's like, hey, we're in the yachting business. You should get in the yachting business. I'm like, hey guys, give me one week and I'll be back here. Go <laughs> back to LA, pack up my stuff. Next thing you know, or move to Miami. And so uh, quite spontaneous as well. And that's what makes my journey and my story so special is, is because I've, uh, I've, 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 uh, I've chosen this path. You know, I could have gotten married, had kids and stayed in my hometown or stayed in those cities that I've lived in. But instead I've, I've chosen to, uh, to chase my dream and to chase my destiny for my kids yeah. and, and my future future family and my future family for when I die because my great grandfather was the ninth president of Yale University and you know I'm gonna live with that I'm gonna live with a bigger legacy than that Amazing. and that's where what I get my name? inspiration Jeremiah Day and that's where I'm gonna get my inspiration from I feel the same most of my friends are still in South Africa married three children picket fence two dogs that sort of thing I left South Africa at the age mm -hmm. of 19 after I studied advertising and PR, moved to London, the two years in London, and then the rest yeah. is history. You know, uh, so the, some the people, people are free know, spirits. The people I know uh, will look at me. Uh, they, they don't know the, what I've been through, they don't know what I go through every day. Uh, they'll look at me and think I'm crazy. And uh, they'll never believe the stuff that I have been through, the stuff that I have sacrificed that, that know me and the people that know who I am, that they really don't know what I've been through. And uh, I think it's amazing uh, that uh, this music and everything like that has, uh, and I have a business too, which, which keeps me happy as well, but this is going to be like the boost of everything. Uh, I'm very absurd with uh, my Instagram name, Billionaire Baron, um, because I manifest what I want. I want billions and billions because uh, I don't want my kids and my family to, you know, I grew up very happy because I was a happy person that, because my parents are very happy. They're happy people. The smallest things make them happy. You know, I want my kids to do what they want and to, to, to live the life that they want to, to be where they want to be. So that's why I risk the things that I do today to, uh, to, to, to be where I want to be. And a lot of people that know me do not know that at all. Uh, that yeah, they, I imagine a lot I of people know. see Billionaire Baron and just think, oh, cringe, who's this little fuckhead, you know? Yeah, but I, I think when people hate, really man. get to know you, there's a really nice soft guy under there, under that like cool cat exterior that you, you're showing mm -hmm. the world. Remember that what you're feeling is creating your reality. So make sure the things you're creating are what you want in your life. Acting as if is the most essential part of successfully manifesting your life. By ignoring circumstances and standing firm in the new version of ourselves, we are selecting the life that we want. 
We need to start behaving like the person we want to become so that we can step into that version really fast. Nothing means anything until you give it meaning. Nothing is good or bad until you label it good or bad. I think I'm there's a little soft, soft but I am gentle, very, uh, spiritual know, soul I love, under there. I love to have a good time. Uh, well, I, I drove a Lamborghini that day and they were like, hey, well, like, what do you do? Like, you know, what do you do for a living? Just because, you know, my buddy has a Lamborghini and I take it out for the day. And, you know, I'm like, I'm just living my life, man. You know, just just uh, having fun. You know, it's not my Lamborghini. But, you know, when when you drive those kind of things, you, you know what you want in life. And, and it's like the ticket to happiness of what makes you happy. Uh, and, and you choose the, the movie you want to watch. Is it going to be a happy movie? Is it going to be a uh, motivating movie? Is it going to be a sad? Is it going to be a horror? So your well, life like is literally it. a movie. Yeah, well, you being the director of your own life, and I think a lot of people aren't. They just, you know, they live their life in autopilot. And, um, yeah, it's quite refreshing to meet someone that actually manifests and directs their own life. And, and I've, I've sacrificed literally everything. Uh, I'm, I'm sacrificing my relationships with my friends. Uh, I'm sacrificing my uh, uh, religion. I'm, I'm sacrificing uh, my family. Uh, there's been a lot of sacrifices, and, and I, I do pray a lot, and I, I do... Uh, I do uh, I do the most I can to you know keep myself afloat and and to keep myself upbeat and uh, who do you pray to God I was, I was baptized a Christian like so Jesus I did baptize a God yeah Mary I have been yep do you know that yeah. I went to a convent school I got taught by nuns <laughs> I did I got taught by nuns I went to the school in Dover North called Our Lady of Fatima Convent and I had Sister Katharina, Sister Teresa, and the one day we were learning about Madonna, as in like Mother Mary Madonna. And I got so yeah. excited. I was like eight years old and I was so excited. And I've got, I've got a Madonna tape, like back in the days we had like cassettes, like cassette tapes, but I had like Madonna, the singer, and it was her album with like, Like a Virgin. Mm -hmm. that one and I was like and Sister Katharina was like oh bring it in bring it in so I brought my little cassette tape in and I played like a virgin to my nun at my convent at the age of eight my parents were called in they got reprimanded I was nearly expelled it was just crazy oh my gosh don't I don't think many people would have (laughs) put me in a convent school (laughs) it's so wild because like when I was younger I would spend my childhood at my cousin's I would go there every weekend and of course on the weekend is Sunday so we would go to church and he was Catholic so I would uh, I would go and stay the weekend at my cousin's and we'd go I'd go to a Catholic service every Sunday because my aunt his mom was like yeah we're going to church on Sunday which was on a Saturday night we're going tomorrow me and Lane would stay up we'd make videos and uh we did. Oh my God, the childhood was great, man. So we would, uh, we, you know, we'd just spend our childhood and we'd go to church on Sunday. I'd go to a Catholic church and I'd have to cross my hands when we have to take the bread. And uh, so you are about yeah. as religious as I am. I've got another story, yeah. another convent story. So we had like mass on like Fridays and Wednesdays, and christened um, in a Presbyterian church so I'm not Catholic but I went to a Catholic convent and every Wednesday and Friday we'd go and do this big mass for like three hours it felt like and all my friends they were all Catholic and they'd all been baptized or what the guys are baptized the girls get something else anyway Holy Communion or something. Anyway, so every Friday and Wednesday, the, everyone would like line up, all my friends, they would go to the front and eat the bread, whatever. And I was like, this sucks. Like, I'm not getting the bread ever. So I thought, okay, one day I was like, I'm going to go up and get this bread from this priest. So I went up, followed my friends up, and he gave me the bread. And I said, thank you. And he snatched it out of my hand and realized that I wasn't Catholic. And he was like, go yeah. sit down. And he shat on me, like shouted at me because I should have said amen. Apparently, but um, yeah. So I've got a few horror stories from that convent. 
in Durban, but it was all fun and games. If you could have one oh, superpower, no. what would it be? If I can have a superpower? If you could have one, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Oh my gosh. Um, if I could have one superpower. All right. You know what? If I could have one superpower, I think it would be uh, knowing the future, uh, creating the future, if that's a superpower. Um, it's not really a superpower. We all have those gifts, actually. Yeah, but if if you could have any superpower in the world, I think that's what it would be, creating your own future. Manifesting. Creating, we can do that. We can yeah. do that already, Baron. To be able to create your own future. If you can create your own future uh, as far as a superpower, then, you know, you can create anything. You can create invisibility. You can create wealth. You can create happiness. You can create, you can create anything. Creating the future is you, man. So a superpower that I would choose is creating the future for yourself. And what's one piece of advice you would like to give my listeners? One piece of advice I'd like to give to all you listeners out there is to, you know, stay happy. You know, life is uh, life is what you make it. So my piece of advice is to uh, stay happy and live your life the way you do and to, uh, you know, be healthy, work out. You know, have that plan for yourself and to not stress over anything, guys. You know, life is very short. Do not stress. You know, life is beautiful. Make it the most of everything. Life is such an adrenaline. You guys do not live in fear. You know, explore the unknown. Get that adrenaline rush you've never had. Just live your life. And, and be happy. You know, every second you wait sad is a second you can be, you know, creating, you know. So just that's my piece of advice. So come from me. There are ways to protect yourself from the energies around you that don't match what you're feeling inside and what you're creating for yourself. You might have parents who think you're living a pop dream, co-workers who don't want you to succeed, or friends who don't actually support your entrepreneurial path. So if you have someone around you that you're trying to separate yourself from energetically and you don't want to attach to, then put an energetic barrier around yourself. I call it an energetic condom. Allowing yourself to understand that anything inside the barrier is protected and under your control. Everything outside the barrier is impenetrable and nothing can get through it. Make this declaration before you enter situations that might affect you, before you have conversations with certain people, before you get on the subway, before you walk into the office, before that family dinner. Knowing that nothing will affect you or your energy or how you feel about yourself, it will bounce off and disappear. All right, perfect. Sounds good. Such a pleasure, guys. You guys are amazing. Uh, thank you so much. Album on the way. A couple weeks put this together. Uh, it's been through the ups and downs, but I'm very excited to show you what I've made. Uh, and this is just the beginning. And thank you for everything. Amazing. Thanks for coming back on, Baron. And I look forward to hearing more from you. Thank you. Bye. I hope Ciao. you enjoyed our podcast. I hope there was an inspirational message inside you for you. I hope you can take something out of Baron's book and keep smiling. So remember that you are the creator of your own reality. Start listening to your intuition. And don't stop believing. Take that midnight train and go anywhere. There is no separation between us and what it is we desire the most. It's all here right now in this exact moment. The happiness, the love, the wealth, the peace, financial freedom and the health. It is here waiting for you. Waiting for you to connect and align with its fullest expression. This podcast is about navigating that fullest expression, going from who it is you are right now and creating the space for who it is you wish to become. It's about giving you the inspiration, the tools, the guidance, and to sow those little seeds of awareness so that together we can expand consciousness. You are capable of anything. Every intention can manifest into your wildest dream. And I'm here to show you how that is possible. 
You are so loved. You are so supported. So trust in the process. Intend to feel good and that goodness will become your life. And don't forget, miracles are everywhere. So stay up to date on my most recent episodes. Be sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can get notified every time I post a new podcast episode. To see more of my creative work, including my art, head over to my online portfolio at musesmerkaba.com. See you next week.